Hello, I'm Tim Smith of the Adams County Historical Society, and welcome to another Monuments Monday. And on this episode, we're visiting one of the rarely visited areas of the battlefield, and we're going to visit one of the rarely visited monuments. Uh, and today, we're specifically talking about secondary position markers, like this one for the 76th New York. So um, on July 1st, the Union Iron Brigade, part of Wadsworth's division, saw heavy fighting. And the members of the 1st Army Corps that fought in the first day's battle uh, were driven through the town and then took position uh, on Culp's and Cemetery Hill. And they put up markers to represent where they were positioned on the second and third day of the battle. So basically, the regimental monument for each of these units is on the first day's battlefield west of the town where they saw heavy fighting. But the secondary position markers were placed to mark where they were at a different time in the battle. Um, and if you remember our episode on uh, Monuments 101, there are something like a hundred secondary position markers around the battlefield. And it really depends upon what you call a secondary position marker and what you don't. Some of them might be construed as advanced position markers. But we're going to talk a little bit about them and see the area I call Northern Culp's Hill. Although, in one of the early monument books, this area is called Western Culp's Hill. But I'm not sure how you can get this to be Western Culp's Hill when it basically uh, faces north. So if you walk down into the woods, uh, just a little bit west of the summit of Culp's Hill, you'll see that there are uh, a line of what is left of the original entrenchments along uh, the northern slopes of Culp's Hill. And this is a secondary position marker for the 6th Wisconsin Infantry. And on July 1st, 1863, uh, this unit, as part of the Iron Brigade, fought in the fields west of the town of Gettysburg. The 1st Brigade of the 1st Division of the 1st Army Corps. Their stubborn resistance in Herbst Woods on the afternoon of July 1st is shown by their high casualty figures. According to the calculations in Regimental Strengths and Losses by John Busey and David Martin, the brigade had 1,829 men present for duty and lost 1,153, the highest total loss of any Union brigade in the battle. On the evening of July 1st, the remnants of Wadsworth's division, uh, Meredith's Iron Brigade, Solomon Meredith, and of course up on top of the hill, Lysander Cutler's Brigade of Wadsworth's division, formed in this area. And they uh, built an entrenchment. According to Rufus Dolls of the 6th Wisconsin, no one ordered the trenches to be built, but they just uh, decided that it was a good position to create uh, an entrenchment or a breastwork. And so you can see they dug a trench, they threw dirt in a pile, they put rocks on top of the entrenchment, and logs on top. And there are a few photographs, we're going to show you a couple here, taken after the battle that illustrate the entrenchments in this area. Of course, there's the famous Matthew Brady photograph that shows the entrenchments uh, by Green's Brigade on the other side of Culp's Hill. But we have uh, a couple 1863 uh, Corley's views, Samuel Fisher Corley from Philadelphia, recorded views uh, believed to be in uh, November uh, 1863. We also have some 1867 views by uh, C.J. Tyson and also by the Weavers recorded along this expanse of the breastworks. Um, but you can see it uh, 
by that time, of course, they were starting to deteriorate, but you can see how extensive they were. Um, Rufus Stalls actually left us an account on the evening of the first day of what it must have been like uh, along this hill. The Iron Brigade uh, had suffered heavy casualties. Uh, you know, companies were reduced to a few men each, and uh, they you can only imagine what they were feeling from the uh, loss of their comrades out west of the town on July 1st. Uh, and according to his, the regimental history, service with the 6th Wisconsin by Rufus Dahls, sad and solemn reflections possessed, at least the writer of these papers, our dead lay unburied and beyond our sight or reach. Our men were in the hands, our wounded were in the hands of the enemy. Our bravest and best were numbered with them. Of 1,800 men who marched with a splendid brigade in the morning, but 700 were here. More than 1,000 men had been shot. There was to us a terrible reality in these figures which represent our loss. We had been driven also by the enemy, and the shadow of defeat seemed to be hanging over us. But that afternoon, under the burning sun and through the stifling clouds of dust, the Army of the Potomac had marched to the sound of our cannons. We had lost the ground on which we had fought, and we had lost our commander and our comrades. But our fight had held Cemetery Hill and forced the decision for history that the crowning battle of the war should be at Gettysburg. And, you know, all across uh, this brigade line, we have of accounts of the men and what they felt that evening of this terrible battle. Now, this line of entrenchments is very impressive to visit. Now, obviously, the entrenchment line has been reworked and restacked over the years by probably the Gettysburg Battlefield Memorial Association and the War Department, but it's well worth a look. Also, I should mention, it's a beautiful day here and um, on the Monuments Monday. And you can actually look through the trees and you can see the terrain around us. There is a decided advantage in visiting the battlefield during the winter where you have this view of the terrain features through the trees. When you're here in the summer, it's just a bunch of woods in front of, a, in front of you and you don't understand the natural strength of this hill. And um, I guess it's a matter of debate as to how far the Confederate attack came into this area on July 2nd, um, 1863. It was Jones's brigade of Edward Johnson's division that hit the side of the hill right here, and their line of battle, um, you know, ended somewhere out here in front of the 6th Wisconsin as they were coming up the hill. Um, some of the units of the Iron Brigade were uh, not in involved in the fighting on July 2nd, except maybe uh, a distant firing into the attack on East Cemetery Hill. But the Confederate units that assaulted this position right here found it very formidable. As a matter of fact, in the official report of the 44th Virginia Infantry by Captain Thomas Buckner, he states, the works in front of our lines were of a formidable character, and in some places they could scarcely be surmounted without scaling ladders. Finding it impossible to dislodge the enemy from this strong position, the line was ordered back. And so the Southerners didn't really come close to breaking through the Union line at this position. And I'm sure uh, if they had attacked, uh, they would not have been successful with this strong entrenchment. Now, I want to tell you another story uh, about this line that occurred just a short distance off to the right flank of the 6th Wisconsin. 